Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week we're going to go over how to build a form for your epoxy and wood table project. And there are a couple of rules to get into first, and that is to make it bigger. First thing, make it bigger. I make mine one to two inches longer and one to two inches wider than my desired finished table size. And that gives me more than enough room to cut off in the end. For making your base here, this is going to be the first part that we're going to cut. Don't forget about that three quarters of an inch thickness of melamine for your side. So... This table will end at 84 by 44, so we're going to go 84 plus 2 plus 0.75 plus 0.75 for the walls we're going to put up on the sides, and that's going to give us our finished size for this first piece we're going to cut. I highly recommend paying the 25 cents per cut and having the Home Depot guys cut this for you on their big panel saw. It is much easier than trying to jockey it around like I am doing here. This was a little embarrassing. Just monitor those guys at Home Depot. They are not always the most precise, so make sure you check their measurements before you just trust what they're gonna cut for you. So you can do it all with just a regular circular saw or even a table saw if you got a little bit more room than me, but try to be pretty accurate here, but it's not super critical that you exactly nail your measurements since we are gonna be cutting the table down in the end. For your sides, I recommend going at least one inch over the thickness of your table. So if your wood is two inches, make your sides at least three inches. And I find myself cutting four inch sides for pretty much all my tables now. Gives you a little extra breathing room and doesn't really take up a ton of extra material. And you might notice some of this material is kind of beat up and that's because I've used it on other epoxy table projects. If you use mold release and you take care when you're taking it apart, you can actually get about two or three tables per sheet of melamine. So just something to keep in mind. Learn from my mistakes and use the caulk I'm using here. Do not use construction adhesive, don't use silicone. Those can actually work a little too well and make taking apart the table next to impossible. So this is a fast dry Alex caulk from Home Depot. It's actually about the cheapest stuff they have. Definitely, definitely use this stuff. It'll make it watertight, but make it also pretty easy to disassemble. Generally, just these 18 gauge brad nails and caulk is enough, even for a pretty good sized dining table. I'll also add screws to this one just to show you guys an additional level of security if you want to be extra sure that it's not going to come apart. But you'll notice I didn't just caulk underneath the melamine. I'm also running a bead on the inside in the corners, and I'll also go back and I will add another bead on the outside. And trust me, it is worth the extra minute or two it takes to caulk every seam because if you have a leak, it is frightening. It's potentially $1,000 of epoxy and all your work leaking all over your garage floor. So hit the inside, hit the outside, hit every corner. Don't skip this step. Really, really highly recommend hitting every possible corner. If you do opt to use screws as well, uh, I definitely recommend using a pilot bit so that way it doesn't actually push your mold apart slightly. So I'm using just regular old construction screws and you can reuse these screws over and over for these types of molds. So pretty easy step. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but I do want to stress you want to let this caulk dry overnight. I have tried doing it in the same day and I've got a leak before. So let the caulk dry overnight. It says 20 minute fast dry, but make sure you give it a good 12 to 24 hours. Probably the most important part of this besides making sure it's watertight is the mold release. And you see a lot of people use the tuck tape or the Tyvek house sheathing tape. I don't like that for a couple of reasons. It does work really well as a nonstick surface, but it takes a ton of time to put on a mold like this. The tape's actually really expensive and I don't make the same size table very often. So I would have to be doing it on every single mold I make. So that's kind of the reasons I don't like it. If you want to use it, it does work well and makes your molds even more reusable. So judgment call, but not a big fan. As far as the volume calculation, is, which is what I'm doing here, I made an entire video on this topic and I will include a link in the video description below so you can learn how to get a really good, really pretty accurate volume calculation for your table. If you haven't watched my videos before, first off, welcome to the page. I appreciate you guys watching, but you should know that I am really good about answering every single comment that you guys leave below because I know it's kind of frustrating when I rush these videos trying to get everything in a pretty short period of time. So if I'm not clear on anything, if I rush anything, please feel free to ask me in the comments. And also, if you enjoy this video, if you're liking what you're seeing, if you're learning a little bit, please hit that subscribe button because that helps me keep making more content just like this. Taking these forms apart is actually pretty easy. First thing you do, take out those construction screws. Second thing, just start hitting them with a big hammer. And if you just go down the sides like this, they should come off pretty easy. If you didn't use mold release or you didn't work it in very well, you'll end up actually having to cut the sides off, which 
don't get too frustrated. There's always a way, but I've had to do that before when I use the silicone to assemble this instead of the caulk. So hopefully get the mold release. Hopefully you didn't use too good of an adhesive and it will come apart pretty easy. You might be surprised to know that it's not actually the epoxy holding the table down at this point. It's the caulk around the edge and that can be a little bit tricky to break it free. And I've cut a bunch of wood wedges from two by fours. I wanted to use a soft wood so it wouldn't mar the wood. So I had to actually get it started with a chisel and then I just go back with my wood wedges and I hit them every couple inches until the whole thing comes free. And once you go around the whole perimeter, the entire back of it will be completely free of the epoxy. So it's just the edge that you need to break free and then the table will be really actually pretty slick underneath from that mold release. And since I didn't have a big reveal where I tilt this table up and I get to show you what it looks like without the mold on the back of it. I did it on this other video that I had. So once I got it free, see how easy that mold comes off the back. So pretty easy, just need to break it free around the edges. I will be doing a full build on this particular project. So I thought I'd give you a little teaser of going to my favorite local commercial shop. And I know this isn't fair. I know you probably don't have access to a shop like this, but for like 75 bucks, they run it through their planer slash wide belt sander. And in about 15 minutes gets my table perfectly flat. So I know everybody doesn't have access to a shop like this and I am so fortunate that I do, but really thanks to those guys at Creative Woodworks in Portland for letting me use this awesome planer slash wide belt sander of theirs. I am still in the process of working on this table. I actually came in from the garage so I could edit this video to have a video out for you guys this Thursday, like I have a video out every Thursday. So I'll show you where I am at so far. It is sanded to 100 grit. I got that chamfer cut on the sides. Everything is looking really, really good on it. I hope to have it done in a few weeks and probably the video out in about a month or so. So let me know what you guys think of this particular design, if you dig that big void or if I think I maybe should have filled it with something. All right, that's the whole video. And as my regular viewers know, I like to give a little bit of credit to the people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your question or comment with your name. And I will know then that you watched the entire video. And I promise I will get to all of those questions first. And if you liked this video, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe for more just like it. Thanks again.